Welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast. This is Devin Crosby of Lynn University. Leadership is a dynamic occupation that requires vision, excellence, but most importantly, the humility to serve your people on a daily basis. As you lead, make sure to become grounded in something greater than yourself. This will shape your decisions, provide clarity to your team, and cultivate trust. And trust is the foundation of success. Enjoy the podcast. Greetings, this is Ty Brown, and welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast, where we highlight executive and organizational leadership. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at One Q Leadership. Our guest today is Angel Mason. Angel is the Director of Athletics at Berry College. Greetings, Angel. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, Angel, your background, you spent time at Pomona College and Hamilton College in administration. Prior to that, you were formerly a assistant basketball coach at Butler University and served time as the head coach at Vassar College overall, roughly 15 or 16 years in college athletics. So I'm excited to have you on. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Okay. Now, now that transition, right, from coaching to administration, there's a number of traits that transfer when you switch from coaching to administration, especially when you talk about just leading people. But there's also a lot to learn with regard to actually dealing with people, right? Especially when you go from coaching young adults to dealing with donors and campus relations and executive level decisions. What was your process, you know, when you made that transition to, and I guess probably still now, as we're probably still learning as we continue uh, with our careers, what was your process of learning some of the skills necessary that probably didn't transfer from coaching basketball? Yeah, I mean, I think that I was actually pretty lucky that early on in my career, um, in my first job at Vassar, I had a chance to be an assistant coach first, as well as serve as an administrator. Um, And so together, I kind of got to build a little bit of both sides of the field. Um, I had an amazing supervisor when I was at Vassar, Sharon Beverly, and It started out as an internship. Um, I was an assistant coach and operations manager, and and that internship let me spend about six weeks, I think it was, in every area of the athletic department. And that really helped me learn all the different aspects and the value in each of them, honestly, which I think always continues to shine through for me now. Um, That was extremely helpful for me. And then, of course, I focused in on my particular areas, which were, you know, compliance and student athlete services mostly. And, you know, that space for me, I mean, that was invaluable experience, even on the coaching side, you know, being able to understand how what I was doing when I was out in the field recruiting or when I was actually on the court with the team and, you know, dealing with the academic side, I was really aware of how everybody's job kind of played into the experience that we were able to provide our students. So a lot of those skills started early on, but honestly, having great mentors um, that I could call on and ask lots of questions, (laughs) which I did regularly, um, having supervisors that allowed me the ability to sit in rooms that, in all honesty, I, I probably didn't deserve the opportunity to sit in at the time, but um, I got to listen a lot and got to hear conversations. I got to learn key phrases. Um, I had an opportunity to hear discussions and how they really look at long-term planning, Um, all of those type of things that, you know, unless you're actually doing the work, you don't normally have access to. And so I had great supervisors that provided me access and, and opportunities and spaces that you wouldn't normally get. And then I volunteered a lot. I mean, if you're not, if you're not volunteering for free, (laughs) uh, you, you don't, you don't get a lot of, of chances to see different things. So I volunteered a lot whenever there was something where athletics and the general college worked together, I was always volunteering my time. So serving on different committees across campus, you know, taking part in campus projects or initiatives that were going on, um, any of those type of opportunities, I was always volunteering. You know, when NCA was holding championships in our area, I volunteered to help 
any and everywhere from running stats to color commentary, you know, whatever I could do to try and be around people that would help me understand kind of the craft a little bit more were kind of the early goings of, um, you know, what I did at that time. But believe me, I'm still learning now. Um, and, <laughs> right. and I'll continue to do that. Um, and, and I'm lucky enough to have great people around me that allow me to do so and that I can, you know, call on at any time. Right. You touched on a number of, a number of things there. Many people who listen to this podcast have heard me say numerous times that in order to be successful, you have to walk with the elephants. And so when, when you're around people who are doing what it is you are interested in, right, you learn from just how they handle themselves in conversation. You learn from how, you know, how their mannerisms when they're dealing with other executives or other people who are leaders in the industry and all those type of things. So it, it sounds like you spent time walking with the elephants when you were uh, young and up and coming in the profession, which I, I imagine still help you to this day. One of the things you mentioned is that when you were at Vassar College, you did an internship as you were moving up into coaching ranks. How long prior to moving over to administration did you want to actually get into administration? Like, were you interested in it when you were coaching basketball? You know, <laughs> no, actually. <laughs> um, it's It's actually funny that um, I was overseas playing and because I had an initial career that I really didn't like. And um, I went overseas to play to try and figure out life. And when I came back, um, two of my mentors, Alfreda Goff and John Hind, basically said, hey, you should be an administrator. You know, you'd be really good at that. And I was like, eh, no, not really. I don't know what you guys do. You mostly just came to my games. So, you know, I'll pass on that. <laughs> and I'm like, but, you know, I know basketball, I'll, I'll coach. And the internship that I got um, at Vassar was a part of the Division Three Ethnic Minority and Women's Internship Grant. And the position was for an assistant basketball and operations person. So for me, I was like, this will help me get my foot in the door with coaching. And if I have to do this other stuff, you know, fine you know, not, no big deal. I, I can do that. And it just worked out really well. And I thought it was really going to be a good opportunity because the athletic director who was there was a long-term basketball coach. So I thought, oh, I can go. I'll work under her. I can pick up nuggets from her as well for the basketball side. I didn't even honestly think about the administrative side. And so, you know, just doing that, the two together, when I left there and went to you know, my alma mater, it was the idea that this would be me starting the D1 track of being a, becoming a head coach. And it was actually there that I realized I missed so much of the stuff that I got to do as an administrator. Uh -huh. And so, it was, that realization. yeah, you know, and for me, it was like, hey, I love my alma mater. I loved my coach. I believed in the system. And so I figured, hey, I can do it here. I can be successful here and it'll open up doors. And it did that, um, but it also brought me to the realization of that I love basketball, but I'm not a career coach. Um, I miss too much what I had the opportunity to do on the administrative side, you know, the touch of all of the student athletes, um, you know, the involvement with all the varsity teams, with all the coaches. I actually miss that part of it, which was surprising, but I'm a big fan of listening to myself. And so if something starts to not feel right or, you know, I feel like I'm missing something, I don't have a problem acknowledging like, okay, that was wrong. I kind of messed that up or, you know, maybe this isn't the path I'm supposed to be on anymore. So it was actually when I was at my alma mater um, at Butler that I realized I wanted to be an administrator. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Listening to yourself, right? Introspection, self-talk understanding who you are, where you are, and where you want to be is a trait that I think probably a lot of people in this country and probably on this earth probably could do a lot more of. Is that something you've always done or is that something that came as you progressed and evolved in your early adult years uh, as a coach or as an executive? Or did that come from playing bars? Or were you always like that when you were young? I think I've always been really good at, you know, knowing who I am. I, you know, come from a a group of women that 
talk a lot, are very honest <laughs> with one another sometimes to to a fault. Um, but I've always been very much so kind of in touch with my own feelings and how I how I think and how I function. Um, there's never going to be anybody that's harder on me than me. Um, I, I challenge myself often, which I think has made me a better person. And in my field, it just happens to work well also. Uh, so I think that's been like where it really comes from. But I, I challenge myself often in that of just, you know, listening to what feels right, you know, call it what you want. Some people say it's like, you know, a little voice inside or, you know, that feeling in your gut or whatever the case may be. I just firmly believe on if something feels wrong, look into it a little bit. You know, if if I feel like I'm missing something, I try and figure out what it is that I'm missing. Um, but it's, it's always kind of been there, but I'm, it, it was taught. It was taught um, at a very yeah. young age. And and you and you've honed it over the years mm -hmm. to understand what what you are telling yourself and what direction you need to be taking. Thinking about your career, you know, you make that transition. You realize administration is the way to go for you, and you work your way up through a number of uh, positions, and you get a chance to be an athletics director there at Barry College. And I wonder about some of the early challenges when you take over as an AD. I mean, you just before we started recording, you told me you worked through the weekend, right? And you just finished up last night and then you come up and start the next day. You know, it's just one of those jobs where you got to put the work in because student athletes are moving and your staff is moving, sports and competitions are happening, things like that. So tell me about some of the early challenges in the chair and really some of your early victories when you took over there at Barry. Sure. Um, well, I think a challenge anytime that you start someplace new is you got to, you know, you got to figure out the new place. Um, you know, what's the culture? What's the climate? What are all the things that you don't know or learn or figure out during the interview process? Um, all of those things are, are big parts of the challenges. And then honestly, you don't know what you don't know, right? I would say that for a long time, I wanted to be like the top flight number two. And I would tell people that all the time, like, you know, hey, I think the best job out there, and I still think this is the case, <laughs> is a top <laughs> flight number two under an athletic director that respects you and allows for you to have a voice, you know. Um, and I still think that that's the case. And that's kind of what I wanted to do and, and what I spent a good amount of time doing. And because I'm, I'm a good teammate, you know, I feel good about making other people look good. I can handle all the operational things. I can be in the weeds. and. So when you know transitioning, first time AD, you don't know what you don't know. It's one thing when you're helping making those decisions as a number two. It's another thing when you have to own them from top to bottom, you know. Um, so that was obviously an immediate challenge. You know, I, I don't know what I don't know. Uh, some of the decisions are the first time that I'm fully making them. Um, and so that was a challenge. But I try to make decisions based on my values. Um, and in order to do that, you got to find a place that aligns with your values. And Barry was that and has continued to be that for me. So that at least kind of softened that blow a little bit. Um, I said another challenge is that, you know, <laughs> you come into the place that I came into that is young in Division Three. You know, I've made a career out of Division Three, and, you know, I'm at a place that when I got here was in its infancy still, you know, 10 years in Division Three. Long time NAIA institution, has had success in NAIA, has a great alumni base, had national championships in NAIA, and now they're trying this new D3 thing. And that's different for everybody. You know, you go from the scholarship dollars and recruiting a certain way to no scholarship dollars and, and having a whole new way in which of, of recruiting and financial aid and all of those types of things. So there's much of that that people were still working through and that you know, I had to work through with them um, in helping folks kind of really begin to fully 
transition with me in what it's going to mean for us to be D3 in this next era. So I would say those are some of the early challenges for me. And then as soon as I started feeling like I was figuring some stuff out, um, COVID hit. Oh, wow. So <laughs> that has, has been an early <laughs> and continuing challenge, uh, but I am happy to say that I'm at a place that has, has taken that challenge on, and honestly, I think we've handled it like rock stars. Um, you know, every every day is a little bit different, but I think we've handled it like rock stars. Right. I, I, I want to touch on uh, the pandemic here shortly but but i want to follow up on like the challenges especially you talked about uh division three and kind of tailoring people's expectations on hey look th this is how things are going to work on this level like we need to make sure we know what to expect and how to move forward and how to be successful where we are there are, there are probably some people's minds who for lack of a better word had to be adjusted right i mean in terms of um, helping people to understand how to find success, those types of conversations and those types of meetings and those type of processes and establishing who you are and the authority you've been charged with and without taking away someone else's authority. Talk to me a little bit about that when you come in the chair and you talk about the transition that Barry was making um, when you came in and the school being in its infancy, I guess, for the lack of a better word, in Division Three. Yeah. So, I mean, Division Three is old. <laughs> you know, when you really right. look at it, the best yeah. Division Three schools athletically um, and academically, you know, they're they're much older schools, much, you know, more longstanding um, than where we have been at. And so for us, you know, a lot of it was just around, OK, we've been Division Three for a while. We found some success in some sports, but in some places we're not finding the success that we had when we were in NAIA. So it's like, what? Why? Where's the question mark? What? Why is this? And so I imagine they look to you to ask that right, question. Exactly. <laughs> like you're exactly. Director, you're um, the problem. Right. And part of that, you know, came down to some spaces of, well, we have to redefine what we're looking at as success right now. Right. We have an old standard, but we're playing by new rules. And those two things, just they don't align. And so everybody's not going to be at the same place at the same time. And so for us, we had to really take a step back from some of the goals that we had before and say, where do we really want to be? When we look at the next, you know, three to five years, what is the next place? What's the next goal for us? And, and we really settled in this space of we're committed to Division Three. This is where we want to be. So a goal for us to reach for is as a department to be top two in our conference. Let's focus on that first. Um, we had some previous goals that were connected more holistically to Division Three as a whole. And, um, you know, that just wasn't where we needed to be. You know, when you start looking at some of those type of longstanding goals, you have to have some consistency at the conference level first. So we just had to realign some things, which just took some conversations and, and us trying to refocus like, hey, how do we go from good to great? And then once we do that, how do we build on top of that to maintain greatness? So we're at the phase of, of really building ourselves from good to great. But I mean... In that same token, <laughs> there's early victories too. You know, I walked in the door here with a strong coaching staff. You know, I have head coaches here who have real tenure in doing their craft and doing it well. And that's a huge victory as an administrator when you don't have to be in the weeds with people about where their expertise lies. That allows you to, you know, be a little more 5,000 feet. You know, and so for me, that was a huge victory coming in the door that I have some real tenured professionals in my coaching staff that take care of their teams and in my administrative staff. You know, my athletic training crew, they work like nobody's business and they're very good at what they do and they have a holistic approach to how they care for student athletes. And that falls in line with the type of experience that I think we should be able to provide. So immediately, there are really huge victories that I was able to have because I wasn't running into brick walls in these spaces that directly serve students. 
So those were huge for me. Um, and honestly, as a first time AD, as what I'll still consider myself a young administrator, um, it's a huge victory for me to get my first AD job at a place that I truly believe falls in line with my values, that is not, you know, a grassroots program, right? Like my department, my my college has been successful academically and athletically. And so that's huge as a first time AD job. Um, and a lot of people don't get to start in a place like that. Um, and then to have an, a college administration and board that believes in what I can bring. And they've continued to show that and allow for my expertise to shine through. Um, and, you know, a huge thing for me is that I cannot stand to be micromanaged. Um, for me, it, it just shows a, a level of distrust. Um, I'm not saying that I won't fail, but allow me enough space to fail and so that I can pick myself back up. And so being at a place where we can have some of those failures together and then both grow has been amazing. So this this opportunity as a whole has really been a victory because I've been able to take my time and evaluate things and make adjustments and decide, you know what, that's not best for where we are now when we look big picture, what's really best for this athletic de department. Like forget everything that I learned before and what I've done before, now how do I do that in a way that best serves where I am right this moment? Right, which, which is an excellent thing, right? It, it has to feel good to be in that type of position, I'm sure at Barry College is excited that you feel that way <laughs> about being there. You mentioned earlier about taking the school from good to great, right? There's a there's a there's a strategy involved in that. There's some strategic planning involved in that. And when you look at some of the major responsibilities about being the leader of an organization or specifically in the athletics director chair, strategic planning is probably near the top of those major responsibilities. And I wonder for you how has strategic planning been impacted, we talked about the pandemic a little bit, been impacted over the last eight to nine months, or almost a year actually coming up here. And and I guess what is your current process for strategic planning in trying to move forward for the tail end, hopefully, of the pandemic and post-pandemic? Yes, and, and I will echo that hopefully um, and upon the, the tail end of that. Um, well, absolutely, yes. Strategic planning is a huge part um, of my responsibilities here and, and strategic planning that's in line with our institutional strategic plan. Um, and so as one move, the other has to kind of move in alignment with that and with where we are and with how we've managed COVID. Um, you know, I've still been able to kind of move the needle a bit. Um, right now, I'm in the midst of really looking structurally long-term for our department, um, looking at what possibilities there may be for future athletic offerings in the future for our students and, and where their interests lie and what we may be able to sponsor. Um, you know, I, athletic training, we have to take a really deep dive into that as that part of the business is changing, right? Many of us have graduate assistants in athletic training and their profession has decided that at the conclusion of this year, graduate assistant athletic trainers will no longer be a function. Um, and, and for us, that's huge. You know, I have two graduate assistants in athletic training that have their own teams that they manage, that get on the road and travel if they want to, um, that are able to really do a lot of work that I won't have moving forward. So that's at the forefront of, you know, our long term planning um, and some of the immediate planning. You know, I don't want next year for my student athletes to have to go from a workforce in that area of five people to a workforce of three people. Um, especially with us sponsoring football. You know, it's it's a difficult space to be in. So much of those things are kind of at the forefront right now. But I think long term, we're really we're really focused in on what are the things that we need 
to be able to implement over the next three to five years that will really just create this exceptional student athlete experience that we're trying to do. And so part of that's personnel. Uh, part of that is is sport offering. Part of that is budgetary and fundraising initiatives. Um, and, and, and a big part of that is really keeping the people that I have right now in place, developing in the work that they're doing so that they can continue to do it well here. Uh, so all of those things are kind of where we are right now. And, you know, we're, we're working through what are we going to have as the values as a department that we stand on? You know, we've just concluded our mission statement, which is kind of a rebuild for us. And, you know, we're working on those type of things as we look kind of long term strategic planning. It sounds to me like the experiences you've had throughout your career, the people who have put their jersey on you, right, so that you can learn from them and represent them when you're in rooms and ear hustling, <laughs> walking with the elephants, have led to you being in a place where you do a lot of self-reflection to help yourself and those around you to be successful and happy to be there at Berry College. And I'm sure they're happy to have you too. Angel, this has been an excellent conversation and I really appreciate you joining us here on the One Question Leadership Podcast. Well, thank you for having me. I've enjoyed it as well. That was Angel Mason. She's the director of athletics at Barry College. And of course, this is Ty Brown with one question. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today. This episode of the One Question Leadership Podcast is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.